Uh, today we are here to study yet another topic of database management systems. And the topic is entity relationship model. The agenda for today is revisiting the database and the data models, entity relationship model, entity relationship diagram, in which we will study what entities are, what are the entity sets, attributes and the types of attributes, relationships and the degrees of the relationships, mapping cardinalities and then we will try reducing the entity relationship diagrams into the relational tables. We will also do a small exercise on the ER model and then we will summarize the lecture. Now, beginning with a quick recap on database. As you can see, or we have learned already, that database is a collection of related pieces of data. Or we can say that database is an organized collection of interrelated data. So it represents or captures the information about the real world enterprise or a part of our enterprise. The purpose of a database is to collect and maintain the data in order to serve some specific needs of the enterprise. Let's take an example to understand what our database is. If we take a case of a university, we may need to collect the data about students, about faculty, about the departments in the university, but the course is being offered to the students. It reflects the state of affairs of the academic aspects of the university. And again, the purpose is to keep a record, to keep a track of all the academic activities going on in the university. Now, what a data model is? Before designing a data, we need to model this data. So, data model actually represents what, how we are going to collect the data and design the data. So data model is a collection of conceptual tools to describe the database at a certain level of abstraction. These data models may be conceptual, it may be representational, it may be physical. Conceptual database give a high level description and they are useful at requirement gathering phase. Another one is representational data model. It is a high level description or it describes the logical representation of the data but it does not give any information about the physical representation. The physical data model, it gives a description about the records, the file formats and file structures etc. Let's begin what entity relationship model is. So entity relationship model is a conceptual data model. It describes the database at the requirements collection stage. When we are about to understand a university system, for example, we need to design the database to keep record of day-to-day -day activities that take place in the university. So, at this phase, we have to describe the data model in which ER model helps us. Now, it is easy to understand for enterprise managers, for whom we are actually making the system. The concepts that are available in the ER model are entities and the attributes of entities, the relationship between these entities and we will also learn some diagrammatic notations in order to design an ER diagram. Now, a database can be modeled as a collection of entities and the relationships existing between these entities. So we can say that ER diagram is a visual representation of data that describes how the data is related to each other. The components are entity, attribute and relationship. So these three components are the major components of an ER diagram. The entities, the attributes of those entities and the relationships that exist between the entities. Now what is an entity? Entity can be any object 
any person, thing, or class. If we take example of a university database, the entities can be a student, a faculty, a department, a course, a classroom. And then what is the entity set or entity type? Collection of similar types of entities is called an entity set. Suppose an entity set is student. So this entity set student is a composition of all students. All students are similar objects. So the entity set student is a collection of all students. So entity set student represents the collection of all student entities. Similarly, a course as entity set represents is a collection of all course entities. So entity is an object, place, person or class. Coming to attribute. Now every place person is identified by certain attributes or properties. For example, a student is identified or recognized by his role number, by his name, by his address, by his gender and so on. So these are the properties or are called attributes which identify that object. So an attribute, in an attribute each entity is described with a set of attributes or properties. So every entity has some attributes that identify that entity. Example can be for a student name is one of the attributes. Role number is another attribute. What are key attributes? Key is an attribute or it may be a collection of attributes that uniquely identify the entity in the, in the entity set. Suppose entity set is student. So how would I identify each and every student? Name, if I say name, can I identify each and every student? Do you think it is, it is a key attribute? No. Because two or more students can have the same name. Then what can be the key attribute which is unique for every student? It is role number. So role number for a student would be the unique. If I say Ram, two or three students may start up. But if I call role number 21, only one student will start so role number in case of student is a key attribute. So a key attribute can be a single attribute or it can be a combination of two or more attributes that can uniquely identify any entity in its entity set. There may be different kinds of attributes. When we design a database, we should keep in mind that all attributes do not have similar nature. So, different types of attributes are number one, it is simple attribute. Simple attributes hold atomic values. Atomic means the values which are indivisible, which is not composed of different values. So, the attributes that hold atomic values are called simple attributes. For example, Department. Department will have the value, a single value. For example, computer science and engineering. It would be a string. It's not composed of different values. A mobile number. It is composed of 10 digit number. So, these are simple values which are indivisible. We may also have composite attributes. Means the attributes, those are composed of different components. So the value for such composite attributes are composed of different values. So this, these composite attributes have several components in their value. For example, address component. Our address is composed of components like our house number, street, city and pin code. So, the address attribute which is composed of these elements is called a composite attribute. Another one is derived attribute. 
it's clear by the name itself that it is derived from some other value. So the attributes whose values can be derived from some other attributes value are called derived attributes. So attribute value is dependent on some other attribute. For example, we have two attributes. One is age and another is date of birth. Age can be derived from date of birth. If we know the date of birth of a person, we can calculate or we can derive the value of the attribute age. So here, age depends on date of birth. So age is a derived attribute. Another one is single value attribute. The attribute that has only one value. Place of birth, we all have a single place of birth. So we cannot have more than two places of birth. So place of birth is such an attribute which will always hold only a single value, which cannot have more than one values. Such values are called single value attributes. Multi value attributes are the attributes which can have more than one values. So Multi-value attributes are those attributes which are associated with a set of values. For example, email address. I can have more than one email addresses. I can have two, three or four, five email addresses. So, email address is an attribute which can hold a set of values. We can have number of email addresses. So, such attributes are called multi-valued attributes. So, we have attributes, symbol attributes which are atomic attributes, composite attributes, which are composed of different components. Then we have derived attributes, the value of whom can be derived by from the other attributes, single value, which can have only one value, and then multi-value, which can hold multiple values. Let's learn some diagrammatic notations in order to draw the ER diagram. Now, entity. Entity can be represented by a rectangle. Weak entity is represented by a double wall rectangle. We learn what weak entity is. Relationships between the entities are represented by diamonds. Attributes are represented by ellipses which are connected to the rectangles that are entities. Multi-valued attributes are represented by double ellipse. Composite attributes use ellipses that are connected to ellipses. Divided attributes are represented by dashed lines and key attributes are represented by ellipses with an underlying line. Let's take an example of a student entity. Student is an entity and therefore it is represented in a rectangle. Inside the rectangle we write the name of the entity that is student. Now, student is identified by so many properties and therefore all these are the attributes of the entity student. Now, since these attributes are of different types, there are different styles of representing them. For example, name. Name here is a simple attribute. It consists of a string. Similarly, Date of birth. Date of birth is again a simple attribute. It is atomic. It holds atomic values. Here age, as you can see, age as we know is a derived attribute. The value of age can be derived from the value of date of birth. So we have represented it with a dashed ends. Roll number. Roll number is the key attribute we know. It represents the student unity. So it has been underlined. So here, roll number is the key attribute of the student entity. Email ID. Email ID is represented by this double ellipse because we may have one or more email IDs. So since email ID is a multi value attribute, it is represented using double ellipse. Coming to address, address is composed of 
house number, street, city and a billboard. Now since this address is a composite attribute, we connect the components with the attribute address. So we show that these are the components of the attribute address. Again, local address is also a composite attribute and it is composed of hostel name and a room number. We assume that all the students are staying in hostels. So they will have a room number and they will have a hostel name. Hence, you can say that how many simple attributes do we have here? We have name, we have sex, we have date of birth. These three are the simple attributes. Age is the divided attribute. Roll number is the key attribute. Email is the multi-value attribute. Address and local address are the composite attributes. Coming to relationship. Describes the relation between the entities and these are denoted, denoted by diamonds. This is a diamond, this is a rectangle. Teacher and student here are the entities. So if we say that the teacher Ram, teacher student Ramesh. So what are the entities here? Teacher is an entity, student is another entity and how these two entities are related to each other? What is the relationship between the two? The relationship is that a teacher teaches the student. So teachers is the relationship between the entity's teacher and the student. So a relationship shows the association between various entities. A relationship can also have an attribute of its own. Let us see. A student enrolls in a course. So the two entities are student and a course. A student can score certain grade in a course. So the attribute grade is the attribute of this relationship enrolls. See, grade cannot be the attribute of student. Can it be an attribute of student? It's not possible because a student can obtain different grades in different courses. So one student will have different grades in different courses. In the same way, grade cannot be an attribute of course because different students will score different grades in a course. So, Grade is the attribute of the relationship between the student and course that is enrolls. Such as a student scores such and such grade in a course. So grade is the attribute of the relationship enrolls. Now, degrees of relationship. Degree of relationship are the number of participating entities. If in a relationship there are two entities that are participating, it is called a binary relationship. If there are three relationship entities involved, it is called ternary relationship. And if there are more than three, n number of entities involved, it is called an entity. Binary relationship means the relationship existing between two entities. So let E1 and E2 be any two entities. So this is the way we can represent it using a diagram. So the number of entities from E2 that an entity from E1 can possibly be associated through the relation R and vice versa determines the cardinality ratio of now let's see what this cardinality ratio is. Mapping cardinalities. For a binary relationship, the mapping cardinalities can be 1 to 1, 1 to many, many to 1 and many to many. Here we will see that 
dashed line signifies one and an undirected line signifies many. Now, coming to one-to-one -one relationship. See, an entity E1 may be associated with at most one E2 entity and similarly an E2 entity may be associated with at most one of E1 entity. Let's take an example. Let student and course be two entities. Now, this diagram represents a one-to-one -one relationship that exists between student and a course. This directed line and this directed line over here represent that there exists a one-to-one -one mapping between student and course. It means, it represents that one student can enroll for only one course. That means one student can be associated with only one course. Student is an entity set, course is another entity set. So every student of this entity set student will be associated with only one course. So one student can take only one course. Similarly, one course can be taken by only one student. So student enrolls for a course and here since it is one to one mapping, one student can enroll only for one course and the course will also have only one student. So one course will have only one student and one student can enroll for only one course. Therefore, this is an example of one to one mapping. One to many. Let's take an example. Student enrolls for only one course. But one course can have many students. This undirected line shows many. And this directed line shows one. So, one course can be taken up by many students. One course can be taken up by many students. But one student can enroll for only one course. This is one to many relationship. Similarly, many to one. One student can enroll for many courses. It's one here and many here. So one student can enroll for many courses. But a course can have only one student. A course can enroll only one student, but one student can be associated by many courses. Many to many relationship. Many students can enroll for more than one courses. Student, only one student can enroll as many courses he wants. In the same way, one course can have many number of students associated with it. Such relationships are called many to many relationships. One student can have many courses, one courses can have many students. We entity sets. We know that entities have a key attribute, which means that that attributes attribute uniquely identifies that entity set. Now at times there are entities which does not hold any attributes that can uniquely identify the entity set. So the entities which do not have a primary key attribute are called weak entity set. Now such type of entity sets, they exist, they depend on some other strong entity set for their existence. The existence of a weak entity set depends on the existence of a strong entity the discriminator or the partial key of a weak entity set is the set of attributes that distinguishes among all the entities of a weak entity set. Let us take an example. There are two entity sets, loan and payment. In a banking system, for a single loan, the customer may pay many times. So, Loan is one entity set, payment is another entity set. The attributes of loan are loan number and loan amount. This 
loan number will be unique for every loan. So, the loan entity set has a primary key loan number. Let us come to the payment entity set. Payment has the attribute payment number. That is, that means it is a first installment or second or third. Date of payment and the amount of payment. So, the payment has three attributes. Payment number, payment date and payment amount. And none of these three attributes are key attributes because there can be same payment number for various loans. It keeps a record of payments only and these payments may be associated with different loans taken by different customers. So there may be so many values, there are similar values in the records. So it is not unique for every payment. In the same way, date of payment may be similar for many loans. In the same way, amount of payment can be sim same for many loans. Here now, the payments for its identification, for its existence, depend upon the loan. The payment number, payment date and payment amount should be associated with the loan number for its existence. Now, a particular loan number will be paid through a payment number on its own by a particular date and a particular amount must have been paid. So here, payment number is the primary, is the partial key or we also call it the discriminator. So primary key of the payment is formed by combining the partial key with the primary key of the strong entity set. Primary key of the strong entity set loan is loan number. It is combined with the partial key of payment that is payment number. So loan number plus the payment number becomes the primary key of the weak entity set payment. Since it is a weak entity set, it has been represented using a double wall rectangle. And the relationship is a weak relationship represented by double wall damage. Now let's learn how to reduce these ER diagrams, ER schemas to tables. Before we start creating tables, we need to understand what attributes are, what entities are, what data, what relationship exists between these entities and therefore we draw ER diagrams. Now, after ER diagrams are done, we will reduce or convert these ER diagrams into relational tables, into the database. So a database which conforms to an ER diagram can be represented by a collection of tables. Now, entity sets and relationships are represented as tables. So in an ER diagram, we have entities, we have attributes and we have relationships. So entities and relationships are developed as, are created as tables. And what about the attributes? The attributes make the columns of those tables. So entities are converted to, are expressed as tables and the attributes of those entities are the columns of that table. In the same way, relationship sets are also reduced to tables. Let's take an example. A customer borrows loan. So how many entities are there? There are two entities, customer and loan. And one relationship borrow. So we will have three tables here, customer, borrower and loan. Now, attributes of customers are customer name, social security number, customer street and customer city. So these four attributes become the columns of the table customer. The attributes loan number and amount becomes the column of the table loan. So here we have three tables in a database, customer, borrower and loan. Customer will have four columns and the loan table will have two columns. See, 
customer has four attributes. Reduce them to tables. So this is a customer table which has four columns. Customer name, social security number, customer street and customer city. And then we will start filling the reports into the table. Another entity, loan. Loan has got two attributes. So we create a table loan with loan number and amount. Here you can see, since loan number is the key attribute, we will make loan number as the primary key of the table loan. Previously, social security number was the key attribute for the customer. So in this table also, the social security will be the primary key. What about the relationship table? The relationship table holds the attributes of the entities, the primary key attributes of the entities associated with it. Since borrow is associated with both customer and loan, and it will hold the attributes, the primary key attributes of customer and loan. The primary key attribute of customer was the customer social security number and the primary key of loan is loan number. So the table borrower will have two columns, customer social security number and the loan number. So both these attributes combine to form the primary key of the table borrower. So there are three tables, student, uh, customer, loan and borrower. Let's take a complete example of ER scheme. Let there be an educational system and there are several departments and students that belong to one of them. Now read this carefully and try to identify what are the entities, what are the attributes and what are the relationship. I read it again. In an educational institute, there are several departments and students and students belong to one department. Each department has a unique department number, a name, a location, phone number and is headed by a professor. Professors have a unique employee ID, a name, the phone number. Each course has a name, a number of credits, and the department that offers it. Students enroll for several sections in a class. Now, we would also like to keep record of the following details regarding students. Name, unique enrollment number, sex, phone number, date of birth, age, and one or more email addresses. Students have a local address consisting of the hostel name and the room number. They also have a home address consisting of house number, street, city and pin code. Now it is assumed that all students reside in the hostel. So reading this problem, we will have to identify the entities, identify the attributes associated with those entities and the relationships that exist between these entities. Now, so we can see there were four entities. We could identify, now entities are person, place, things. So department is one of the entities, student is another entity, professor is another entity and course is the other entity. So there are four entities. The department is identified by department number, name, location, phone number and an HOD. So these are the properties that identify a department. So these become the attributes of the entity department. See, 
department has got a department number and since this department number is unique it becomes our key attribute it is underlined here department has an hod phone number location and pin similarly a professor entity is identified by a professor id so since it is a unique it's unique it's the key attribute professor will have a name and a phone number a course is identified by a course id which becomes the key attribute the credits associated with that course and the name of the course so we have these three entities with their attributes plus the fourth entity student since age was a derived attribute local address was composed of these two address was again consists of four components we have more than one email addresses so email address is multi value and a unique roll number for every student so the roll number is the key attribute draw the relationship between these entities so this is a complete ear diagram for our educational system a student belongs to the department now here you can see n and 1 this shows many to one relationship n shows that many students belong to one department professor both
primary view of the entity E1 and another will be the primary view of the entity E2. In case the relationship has got its own attribute, the attribute of the relation will be the third attribute for that relationship tables. In this case, suppose there is one attribute belonging to a relationship table, the table that table will have three columns. The attribute of the relationship itself, the primary key of the first entity associated with it, and the primary key of the second entity associated with it. We also construct an ERA model for the educational institute. Now, there is a small exercise that you can do it yourself. Read this carefully and try to identify entities, attributes, and relationships and draw an ER diagram for this. So construct an ER diagram for a car insurance company whose customers own one or more cars each. Understand very carefully. Customers own one or more cars each. Each car has associated with it zero to any number of recorded accidents. So, after reading this paragraph, we can identify what are the entities. So, you need to first identify the entities, identify the attributes. If they are not given, you may create the attributes and see the relationship and the mapping that exists between those entities. Now you can see customers own one or more cars each. So you can make out what type of mapping they do. Each car is associated with it zero to any number of recorded accidents. So I am sure now you will be able to draw an ER diagram for 